Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Okay, let's um, let's get into the the, the um, I, I have <clears throat> I have ten verses. Okay, so get your cameras. There's a PowerPoint. You can take pictures. You can just follow follow. And uh, it's funny because last a week ago I was doing a, <clears throat> a conference on the Book of Revelation, and I have. There are, I don't know how many people were there, but all the, all the younger generation were with their phones ready to take pictures. And there was a, a lady who was 90 years old there, uh, wanting to know more about Revelation. Uh, but she was with her notes and a pencil. <laughs> and I, I had to tell her, we're going to share the PowerPoint with you because she wanted to write everything that I was saying. And everybody else is with, their, you know, the, the, you know, they're ready to take pictures. So you're free to take uh, pictures. We, we are. I was thinking about this week about Shavuot. Uh, I mean, Dima be begins last week about talking about Shavuot, and Shavuot is coming. Uh, it's coming next week. Uh, at the same time, I uh, I cannot avoid to think that we are. We, we are complicated humans, are, are we? we? We are, I mean, I was just thinking about the voices that I have in my head, <laughs> talking to me. Uh, I, I was, something that probably you don't know, I'm from Venezuela, uh, Barbara didn't introduce me this time, but, uh, but uh, and that's by my accent, you know, you can tell. Uh, but uh, one of the things that you people, most of you don't know is that I, I was when I when I I hear that voice from from the Holy Spirit, the Ruha Hakodesh. I was 16 and I was I was actually going to a psychology school. I was right in the middle of my, my second year of psychology because I wanted to know more about the complexity of the human mind, and I. I became a believer at the age of 16. I was around 18, 19 when I was right in the middle of that. And in the middle of this secular, uh, you know, understanding of what, you know, God created. Well, there is no God. There was a, they, they, you know, they were talking about, you know, uh, this, the, the school I was going was mostly based on what Sigmund Freud uh, theory of personality is, and you you, you probably heard about Sigmund uh, Freud. Freud uh, when you were in high school, and uh, we I was there deep on those understandings, and uh, and I believe I remember going to school one morning, listening to my professor about you know the ego and the super ego and and the voice that talks to you, and like, and I hear a voice. <laughs> that said, this is a waste of time. <laughs> and I don't know if that was me, my voice, or it was the Holy Spirit telling me. And that was the end of the semester, something about going to te a test. I, I, finished my I finished the year, I paid my tuition, and I said goodbye <laughs> to the school. And I actually hear that voice that told me, did you be, Come and be prepared for ministry. And that was, uh, I was 18 when I heard that voice. So now, having a few years of that, <laughs> where I, but I, I, imagine, Im, think about this. You, you, you have a personality, right? We cannot, we cannot avoid that. We have, we have been created by God with a different gene of DNAs and, and things that comes where you know you can see your dad or your mom in you, and then you can see, you can see yourself and your kids and your grandkids, right? I mean that is something that is amazing. That's a miracle from God. At the same time, you have, uh, and this is this message is about communication. Uh, I think God is interested in communicating with us, and uh, actually to make it more 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 real to us, He sent you know the Savior the Messiah, Yeshua, and then after that, he sent the Ruach HaKodesh to be inside of us, to be part of that voice that talks to us. Now, 
I have, we, we have create, we been created, and this is part of the, the verses that I'm going to go, Romans 8, 5. We have uh, Romans, uh, I, I, my, my title is Created to Live with the Holy Spirit. And that is something that we cannot avoid. We can st step away from him, but that is how it's going to be there. Romans 8, 5 says, and this is the set, we, this is number one verse. For those who live according to the flesh, set their what? Their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Ruah serve their minds on the things of the Ruah. So we will have to make a decision today. And that is what I, I have been uh, you know, dealing with that in my own life. Uh, and, and that is something that, that I, I want you to, to think about it. Number one, there's, a, there's, a second, uh, there's eight things here that I want to share with you. Number one, that we have been created to have a spiritual connection, okay? We are in the era of communications, right? If we don't have Wi-Fi, it's like, it's, I mean, we have a phone, and, but that phone is uh, that we carry everywhere, you know, our IRO, today's IROs, you know, we carry that phone everywhere, but if there is no Wi-Fi or a 5G, then we, what? It's basically useless, right? Okay, so I, I do believe that we are, uh, and I, am, I, th I hope that you understand the, the importance of communication. I do believe that Adonai wants to communicate with us. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, uh, and that is the DNA, the, the microchip. Okay, I'm using some words that you better understand. The, the, uh, then God said, let us make man in our, what? Key word here, image. After our likeness, let them rule over the fish of the sea, uh, over the flying creatures of the sky, over the livestock, over the whole earth, and over every crawling, crawling fish. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid of the, the spider. The spider uh, is, uh, you, can, you have control of the spider, okay? Uh, and over crawling creatures that crawls on the land. God created humankind, in, again, repeats the same thing, in his image, in the image of God, he created him male and female. Hmm. Hmm, no, no more comments. Male and female, he created them. Okay, so the, the original plan was communion, management, and multiplication. That was, that was the, 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 the main message. The original, original plan also came with the microchip, okay, that we were created to the image, to connect, to judge, to physically fulfill the earth. Interesting enough, that, you know, that, that continues to be, actually, if we go and look at Matthew 28, that continues to be the same mandate. Go and make disciples. So in the, the factor of multiplication. Go, go where? You know, the whole earth. And go and make disciples. It's still the same command of, but what I like from, from God, from his creation, is that he is a creative God. Amen to that? He's a creative God. Look, we're all humans here, right? <laughs> I hope we're all no, no aliens today. So we're all humans, and we are all created different. We all have two eyes, one nose, one mouth. But we're all different. Look around. This is the time for you to look around. Oh, yeah, we are all created different, but we are... But we also had the ability to be creative, and that is something that I always, uh, the complexity of my brain, okay? Now, God, you know, the Bible says that we have a body, we have a spirit, and we have a soul, right? And sometimes the Apostle Paul connects those two, spirit and soul. But what I, what I, I want to talk to your soul today. I'm talking about communication. And, and the soul... Uh, this is an experiment you can do any time you want, except when you're driving. But when, if you close your eyes, <laughs> if you close your eyes, listen to this question, because I do that constantly. If you close your eyes, what do you see? I definitely close your eyes already. <laughs> 
If you close your eyes, what do you see? And I hope that you don't see the Amazon uh, so, uh, you know, app. Or what, what did you see? What did you see when you close your eyes? You see something. And, it, and if you concentrate and just spend time praying, uh, you will, uh, to a point, you will see your soul. Okay? The problem is that we, we haven't been trained to do that because we are too busy thinking about other things. Okay? So think about that. When, we, when you pray and you close your eyes, what did you see? Okay? Just, just you know, I, I, Alex is going crazy with this. But, but that is something that we, we need to start looking into that because I do believe that we, we, we have. If you have, if you believe in Yeshua, then now you have number two. I mean, Ephesians 1.13 says it clear. After you heard the message of truth, the message of what? Of truth. The good news of your salvation. And when you put your trust in him, you were sealed with the promise of the Ruah HaKodesh. So what, what that means, okay, well, is the fulfilling of the original plan, okay, that if we trust in him, and I do believe that Adam and Eve, that's what they did. They, they were completely in a, in a, in a free Wi-Fi, 100% strength with, with Adonai in, in, in the garden, okay? They were connected. They were connected. Chapter 3, come and disconnect, you know, but if you continue to stay in one and two in Genesis, that's, that's where it is. We, we were connected. Uh, that was the plan, okay? But now it, believe, it requires trust. It requires that we believe. It requires a seal, okay? Uh, Paul in Ephesians says that we are all sealed by the Ruach HaKodesh once you believe in Yeshua. Now, what is that seal, okay? Have you ever gone to a, a place, uh, to the supermarket, and there is, you, you doubt the product, you look at the seal, right? There's a quality, a seal of quality. This is something, if the seal is broken, you know, don't buy it, right? If, the, if you receive an envelope that is, says confidential, it's private, and the seal is broken, you know, from the envelope, what do you think? Hmm, somebody already messed up with my mail, all right? So then you get suspicious. But interesting enough that this seal is a mark, okay? It's a mark of, that shows possession, authority, identity. You know, if you, if you read the parasha for this week, it was about identity, okay? And security. We belong to him. Do you believe that? We belong to him. And that is a seal, okay? So we are sealed by God. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Number two, then when once you are sealed, then you have a purpose in this life. And uh, let me tell you what's the purpose, okay? We are, number two, we are created to love, to obey, and to relate to others. Matthew 22, 36 to 38 says, Teacher, which, and you know this passage, right? Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the Torah? And he said to him, You shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Okay? Heart, soul, and mind. Nothing to do with Freud, huh? But here we go again. You know, there's a, there's a heart, there's a soul, and there is a mind. And this is the first and greatest command. And the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophet hang on these two commandments. Okay? And you know that. But, but look what Yeshua said after that John, in John 14. If you, and it's a conditional, if you what? If you love me, you will keep my command. And, uh, and that uh, word in the Greek, uh, love, is agape, which is an uh, unconditional love. Okay? So we are, first, we are 
created in the community. We are created to be together with somebody else, okay? We don't want to be like Adam. After naming all the, all the animals, he felt what? I felt alone, okay? So we are created to be in community, not isolated. And there is a perfect combination here. is love and there is obedience, okay? First thing that he says, you know, listen, you know, listen, or, you know, uh, Shema Israel, he listened, okay? You should, you should what? We should love. So love is the first element, and it's actually very easy. I will tell you that it's very easy to obey if you love, okay? And that is something that we have to keep, okay? It's a, it's a perf perfect solution. Love make life easy easier, okay? So here's the challenge for you today, and number two, um, how much do you love God today? Not, not, not yesterday and not tomorrow. How much, do you, how much do you love God today? From the scale of one to 10, how much do you love? Or do we have to get the three questions? Do you love me? And that was Peter, right? Peter, do you love me? Okay, put your name on it. Alex, do you love me? Do you love me? Okay, and those are the, those are the things that, that, those are voices that come to my mind, you know, that when, when I'm studying the, the word or when I have to go and do something else. Oh, do I have to do that? Do I have to go all the way to, do, to be teaching, you know, the book of Revelation? Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be, well, Alex, do you love me? Because when you love, okay, so we are created to be in communion with him, communicating with him. We are created to love and relate to others, okay? So this is building up. Number three, we are also created to live in holiness, okay? Therefore, that's Second Corinthians. Therefore, since we have these promises, loved ones, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of body and spirit. Huh, here we go again with the same with the dualism. Body and with spirit. Perfecting holiness. And then Paul agree, uh, 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 add something that is interesting. And the fear of what? And the fear of God. So cleansing, okay, we had to make clean, purify, we had to wash our soul, uh, to wash ourselves uh, from where, be aware of what, be aware of not being contaminated by whom, by the, by the world, okay, things that were going to separate yourself from God. A believer that repents as soon as she or he, he or she is aware of sin, that is something that we need to do every day. How many times do you already sin, sin, today, sin today? Okay? Do we were in a constant, com, completely, uh, you know, uh, uh, fight with evil, fight with our own flesh, constantly? Uh, the person who cleans, okay, but we're not, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, uh, even in biblical times, you know, they used to go and purify themselves in water, okay? Well, we don't have, we don't have where to go and, and, and purify. We don't, have, we, need to go, we don't have to go to the temple. We are now the temple, according to the scriptures, okay? So now we've had to have a constant cleaning. Fear. I want you to have that word in your mind today, fear. Fear means respect, reverence, uh, holy fear, so what, what are things in your life that make your body and your spirit unholy today? Now, let me talk about fear real quick. Something happened to me yesterday. I, I have been planning to do, some, to, to do uh, some work, some repair in my, in my roof, okay? Uh, you know, it doesn't rain too much here in California, but suddenly it began to rain, it rained a year ago, and there, is, there was a leak on my roof. Okay, what, what? really? You know, the, it only rains 10 days a, week, a year, right? And I have a leak. But, but I, I was planning to, to go up there 
I am, a, a, well, and Nancy will um, uh, tell you, I am a, I am a, a, fear, uh, have a fear of heights, okay? And I, re I noticed that when I was climbing, climbing a half dome in, in Yosemite Park, okay? When I was there in that rock and I look around me and there was nothing but sky, I thought, I, there was, I was paralyzed. I had to just turn around and start going down. I couldn't go up there, okay? But I, I had this fear of heights. Who, who is fearful of heights? Anybody? Well, no, no, Barbara, no. Well, I, I have been planning that I had to go up there to the roof to fix that, and actually, and I had to do other, other. So, so I, bought a, I bought a rope, I bought a, a harness, I bought, uh, I mean, I bought, uh, good shoes to, to have a good grip so I can go up there, okay? But guess what? The day came and I didn't do any of that. <laughs> There's a voice in me saying, okay, uh, no, it's not too bad, you know. It's not too bad. So I, I put my ladder up there. Uh, I went up there. Not, nobody was home. Well, my, my, you know, my son was at home, but he was sleeping. So I went up there, and then I went to the second level, which is the higher part, okay? So I had to put another ladder in the roof to get to the other one. And I, I go up there, and I can see China. You know, I can see, I can see everything. I can see uh, Russia uh, from there. Uh, and then I got my blower out there, all my ropes, and I said, be careful with the ropes. So when I go up there, there's a voice telling me, uh, you should, where is your phone? Because if, some, if something happened to that ladder, the second ladder, I, there is no way I can go down, okay? And so I'm not going to be yelling like a crazy man up there. Uh, to, so, but my phone is in my office, okay? And I go up there and say, you should get a rope. At least the ropes tied up. But the rope was in the, still on the box, the Amazon box, down in the garage, okay? <laughs> and then it began that fight into what is common sense, right? and what the Holy Spirit is telling me, okay? But, you, but here, here is the thing. I, I'm getting closer to the edge because I wanted to clean the gutters. That's what the, that was the, the challenge on the second floor. And, and I'm, but here's the thing. I, as long as I, the, from, at the first moment, I look at the edge, okay? And I begin to get closer and closer and closer, okay? And I have fear. And I have fear. But I didn't have my phone, I had no rope. I should have fear, right? I should have fear, to, no, no rope. So, if, and then my mind began to, well, I have afflux. So if I fall, um, and, and then my mind began, to, see, see how the, those voices come to you and they're talking to you? Uh, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit is like, hello, you know, God's only talking to me. But what I'm going to tell you is that, uh, as long as I'm there and washing and cleaning and trying to be careful, there is voices, my cell phone, the rope, okay? Even, even my neighbor's wife came up from the backyard saying, saying, hey, you're going to give my husband a heart attack. She's yelling from me the, from the bottom. I said, why? Because he's, a, he's afraid of heights, and he thinks that you're going to fall. And he's in the window, freaking out, okay? And so there are voices. Now, think about this in your life, okay? Now, put that in the spiritual life. When you are beginning to do things that are not normal, like skipping, skipping the, you know, the, the obeying part of life, and start running, you know what happened to me? Because now, at that point, I began to analyze myself. I brought Freud back to, into, my, into, uh, into my logic. But you know what happened after an hour of cleaning, trying to do work on that roof? You know what I, at one point I realized? I lost the fear of falling. Because I got, you got what? At the beginning, when you're about to do something that is wrong in front of God, you, you have fear, right? But after a while, you begin to justify, right? That's me. That's my, the human of me. Even I cut myself. I don't know how I got cut up there, but I thought, well, Rambo had a better cut. Even, even I brought Rambo into the logic, my logic. But what I realized is, and this is what happened to every, every in, in the spiritual sites, 
One, I mean, I was just walking. At one point, I was just walking backward next to the edge because I got what? I got comfortable. I got cocky. I got, I think, like, I was thinking, I can even fly, you know, up here, okay? <laughs> but when you lose the fear of the Lord, that's when you fall. Because I was basing on me. Today, at this morning, I got up and I said, well, how come my legs hurt so much? Well, I didn't, yeah, because the pressure of being there, you know. But I, what I'm saying is, holiness is something that God has given us to do because he is holy. The only way we approach to him is that we are also becoming holy. We, we cleanse. But when... Uh, you remember you have those high tops roofs that you want to go and you think that you can do it yourself. You know what? Watch out. Because you don't have, you're not an angel. Okay? God has given, doesn't, didn't give you wings. Okay? And when we lost that fear of the Lord, at one point we get cocky and what? Okay? So, honey, I'm still alive. I still, still here just... Came back down, uh, and then and I went up again, and I, did, I forgot my phone again. Like, I should have my phone with me, okay? But that gives you number four. Number four is this. God has created us to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're about to come into Shavuot, okay? And I know, can you, can you imagine? I was just thinking about this. Can you imagine that the disciples did not listen to Yeshua? Remember what Yeshua said? In 10 more days, stay where? Stay where? What was, the, what was the request from Yeshua? Stay in Jerusalem, okay? Stay in Jerusalem. And they couldn't just say, you know what, let's go back fishing. <laughs> you know, if, if actually Shabuah will happen. I mean, it's a promise, right? But there is, everything is a, is a connection. But are you, are you aware that the, the Holy Spirit talked to us? The question that I always ask, when I always ask that, ask that question to my Christian friends and Christian brothers and family, is that, uh, yes, we know, the Bible says that, okay, that he will talk to us. But how, how I know? How I know that that voice that is talking to me up there in the roof yesterday was the Holy Spirit, or it was my flesh, Oh, it was my neighbor. <laughs> oh, the, the Lord is telling, telling people. At one, point, at one point in that hour that I was out there, there was an old couple walking, and they were standing in the sidewalk <laughs> looking at me, and they were like, oh, they're admiring my work. He said, no, they're probably afraid that they'll worry about me. He said, who is that crazy person up there? But, you know, we are created to listen to the Spirit. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, here's a good list, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any virtue and if there is anything worthy of praise, dwell on those things. Dwell. You know what dwell means? Put your mind on it. Okay? Put your mind on it. If you want to, if you want to be looking for God's will today, okay, dwell on these things. Because they're going to give you the answer. So what, what happened is I don't dwell. I am too busy thinking about other things. So here, here's how you listen to the Spirit. This is my list. You can add, you can take away, okay? But here's my list. First, put, put your attention on the things above. According to this passage, put your attention on the things above, okay? Put your attention on God. Second, keep the channel of communication open. Keep yourself holy in front of him. Okay? Third, learn the volume of God's voice of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, uh, I, I, one of my preferred passages in the Old Testament is, is Elijah in 1 Kings 19. You know, after 
doing all those miracles that Elijah did, you know, they said, we're going to, we have a price on your head. And Elijah, do you remember that? Elijah, run. He, he escaped, and he's in the middle of the desert, and there's an earthquake, and there is a hurricane, and, there's, and he's trying to find peace on God. And there is, finally, God came and talked to him. And you know how? With a very still, quiet voice and talked to him. And that is something that I keep in my mind, okay? Because I don't think God had changed. Or learn, learn, that, learn the voice of God. Fourth, learn that the Holy Spirit never contradicts himself. Okay? Never, will never contradict God's word. Because he is the creator of the word. Okay? And so that's something that you always have to, don't, you know, don't justify yourself like I was doing up on the roof. Okay? That I start believing things that they're not, okay? Uh, so le learn that. Learn that he never contradicts. And the last one is learn to verify his voice, okay? Now, let me tell you something. Uh, there is a voice that comes to us, and it's from the devil, okay? And the devil is the father of lies, according to John 4, okay? So just, I'm going to... Uh, let me, there, there's many things about, about that. The devil will talk to you, just what we just read today, on the temptation, okay? Uh, there is another voice. It's the, vo the voice that comes from the world, okay? Okay, so, listening to the Word every morning, or we listen to Facebook? Oh, no, not Facebook. Um, TikTok. Do you listen, where, where do you get your news? From the headlines on channel whatever? Every morning? From social media? Where, where do you get your news that feeds your soul and makes you angry or frustrated? Okay? Hey, there is nothing, there is no good news. These are all bad news. Okay? Actually, I would highly recommend that you filter the news that you're listening to, okay, or reading. I, I, if it was for me, I will not listen to any news. I don't listen to the news at the channel. At the, you know, I'm not going to say the name of the, of the channel. I'm not getting in trouble here. But the, the 7 o'clock, the 8 o'clock, the 5 o'clock news, I, I don't listen to them. I, I actually have, uh, uh, I have an, an application of news that I have chosen that come to my uh, email every morning, and those are the ones I read. I don't read anything else, okay? So uh, you have to be very selective. Uh, there is a third voice that comes to you. is the voice of your flesh, of you, or your personality, your, your little tiny voice that comes, you know, there's, you know those voices on, on the cartoons, you know, that comes to you and talk to you, okay? Well, and those are uh, feeding your flesh, your desires, according to Colossians uh, 3, 5, there are desires that come to you. What is the most, and you can know, I mean, you can control, you can filter, you can avoid, okay? But what is the voice that comes to you every day when you're making a decision? Okay? And I hope that voice is from the Holy Spirit. That is the one that you have to listen and that is, uh, you have to be holy, you have to be loving, you have to obey, you have to be in, in the right Wi-Fi, 5G connection with God for you to get that, okay? Uh, I hope that you're not like, sometimes we're like, you know, you still do that some places? Like, this is going to help. You, know, you, you put your phone up there, like, that's going to help, okay? But the, the 5G, it belongs to God. <laughs> And it's the one that you need to be communicating, okay? So here we go. When you do that, number five, you are created to have a life full on the Spirit. We always talk about this. How, we can, how can I be full of the Spirit, okay? So pay attention, says Paul, on how you walk. Did you hear that? Just pay attention on how you walk. 
no as an unwise people, but as a wise. Make the most of your time, because your, day, your days or the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but, under, but understand what the Lord's will is. And not get drunk on wine, for that is reckless. Instead, and here's the famous uh, phrase, be, or command, be filled with the Ruach. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and, mar and making music in your heart to the Lord. Do you see that? There's nothing about me. There's, make music for you by, by, you know, so you can feel better. No. Everything that you do is to, to what? To connect with and to make God a blessing. Okay? I was giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Okay? So as a believer, you need to have a, great, a, a better attitude. The attitude of, of giving life to others and a, an attitude of worship and an attitude of thanksgiving. A person who sends and discerns God's presence is a person who is that. Now, I, I, in my life, I have... There's ways that I can improve my communication with the Ruah. Okay, let me, this is my experience. Prayer. Okay, I pray and I pray. You know, the Lord, for, for one reason, uh, the Apostle Paul said, you pray, what? On Shabbat only. No, you pray? All the time. Okay, so if, 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 were you driving you know, talk to him when you're, you know, studying or walking or doing things, working, you communicate with him. It's a, it's a habit that you have to create, create that habit of praying to him constantly, uh, talking to him, okay? And that, that connects my soul with him, and I can actually uh, align with him. Another one that I am trying to improve in my life is singing. Worshiping him, okay? Um, I, I love our worship. I mean, I, I, I go to many churches. I go to many churches uh, because I'm a pastor. I have 36 churches I supervise, and I go to those churches, and I listen to their worship. And, uh, and I still believe that, uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble with this with my other people, <laughs> but, uh, but I still believe that our worship is one of the best ones. Okay, and that is something that we that we uh, uh, well, we, we we commend, yeah. <laughs> and it's, 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 yeah, but it's, it's it's up to us, right? Uh, I'm sick and tired of people coming to worship with their phone, looking at what's happening on the phone, instead of what is happening with this, their soul connected to them. Okay, so there's just details I observe. I I'm I'm okay. And I was introducing, I was sharing about my life in, in, the, in the Messianic movement, okay, to another, um, to a group of pastors this, this past week in the Bay Area. And, and I was sharing about, hey, I, I use, uh, you know, because they're talking, you know, many pastors, and this is for you to pray, but many pastors don't worship on Sundays. They work. We work on Sundays. We're all worried about all the things that are happening that we forget to worship. Okay, and we're the one that bring in the, the gospel, or bring in the, the, the word, right? But we're not, we're, con we're not connected. So one of the things I mentioned today is that I have something different. I use Shabbat to connect with God. <laughs> and they're like, Saturday, what? I said, I mean, I was, I opened a little bit of my life with, with them. And I said, yeah, I, I had no fear of coming to Shabbat and being just, Nancy's husband. Because he, <laughs> it looks like Nancy, people know Nancy more than me. Okay? I'm okay with that because my intention to come to Shabbat is that I can connect with the Creator and be in peace. All right? So hopefully, uh, I have actually learned that Shabbat is my day of rest. And those are things that we need to process, right? Because I, as a pastor, I rest on Shabbat. I work on Sundays. 
Okay? And people don't understand that. Oh, you, you know, Sunday is the day of rest. And not for me. Because <laughs> that's my day of work. Okay? But what I'm saying is uh, it's, an, it's an attitude. So can you imagine that we can actually reach that attitude every day? That I need to connect with my creator. I need to open my communication. Uh, I don't know how many of you do this, but I actually I, I have learned this last days a month to turn my phone off when I go to sleep. How many how many do that? Oh wow, okay, only this side. Okay? <laughs> All right. Um, because I didn't. I don't know why. Is, what is that honey? F FOMO? The, the the fear of missing missing out? Missing what? <laughs> <laughs> missing is sleep because I worry about the phone, right? Um, but just, just think about this, that, that we need to connect because that will give you a life full of the Holy Spirit, okay? Number six, two, uh, I'm almost done. Six, seven, and eight is what now you need to do. Number six is that we are created to produce good spiritual fruits, okay? We are created to produce good spiritual Fruit. Likewise with you, since you are uh, jealous of spiritual gift, keep trying to excel for the building up of the community. The spiritual gift that God has given you, okay, that the Holy Spirit has given you, is not for you, it's for the community. It's for us, okay? Do you know what are your holy, your a spiritual gift, because it had to create a good fruit. A good, you need to be productive on this. Okay, number seven, create. Cre we're created to serve the congregation of believers. Okay, uh, First Peter. Peter says this: as as each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another. Huh? Paul and Peter are in the same connection here. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of the many sized grace of God. It's time to discover your, your spiritual gift. What is your spiritual gift? And it's time to use it, okay? According to, according to what I see in the scripture, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, has given you at least one. And it's not the gift of eating. That's, uh, the people have mentioned that I have that, okay? It's not the spirit of giving. It's something else. There's, it, it is in the New Testament, okay? So and, uh, find it. The last one is this. All of that, what I said, have a mission. Number eight, we all have created for the Great Commission. Do you remember the first time somebody talked to you about Yeshua? Did you remember that day? Oh, what, oh, that year? Did you remember? That was an important day. You know why? Because that person that talked to you was obeying the Great Commission. The Great Commission of multiplying that was given to Adam and Eve in Genesis 1 and 2. Okay? He said to them, and this is Yeshua, uh, uh, well, Luke talking about Yeshua, it is not your, your place to know the times and seasons which the Father has placed under his own control. But you, just don't worry about that, but you will receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh has come upon you. We have the authority of God to do this. And you will be my witness, witnesses in where? And you know this, right? In Jerusalem, which is your home, in all Judah, Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Beth and Munah is an example of that. That because we have people from all over the places coming. Okay? Now, are we done with that? I mean, we talk about multiplying, we're talking about growing, okay? And I, I'm going to end with this. There is, uh, somebody mentioned this before in, in social media, I think, uh, someplace I read it. But he says, be ready and prepare the synagogue or your congregation, okay, that points to God. Our worship points to God. 
our dens should be what pointing to. Okay? So hopefully you're not coming here to watch the dancers. <laughs> okay? As they dance, we're pointing to, okay, our worship, our Torah service, everything should be, you know, when we bless our kids, everything should be pointing to God. And God is going to bring the people. Now, we need to be in the right path, right? Uh, I just, I just uh, pray for all of you that you can listen to the Ruach HaKodesh this week. Uh, we, we're having a service here on, on Wednesday, and I, it would be a good time to, uh, to unplug and to uh, unplug and to uh, open those lines of communication with the Ruach HaKodesh so we can listen to him. Amen? Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit, your, your Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you for uh, giving us our vision. And thank you for putting out the seal of, of property. We belong to you. No, Lord, we, now we want to celebrate. We want to be able to distinguish the voices that are coming into your, our, our head. Um, and that, that we can clarify and, and filter which one is the voice that we want to hear. So, Lord, thank you for your discerning spirit. And the, and the opportunity to, to listen from your word. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you.